Let's discuss about the important topic paddy cultivation where it plays an important role in the agriculture. Paddy is the important crop and also the India's rice production estimation at the record of 102.36 million tons in the Kharif season of 2020-21 crop year on the back of good monsoon rains and acreage according to the government data. The rice production stood at 101.98 million tons in the Kharif season of 2019-20 crop year. The Union Minister, the Union Agriculture Ministry on Tuesday released the first advance estimates of production of major Kharif crops for 2022-21. As per the data, the total food grains output in Kharif season of 2020-21 crop year is estimated at the record of 144.5 million tons against the 143.38 million tons in the previous year. Let us discuss about the package practices of the paddy. First point, first point in the paddy cultivation is the land preparation. The land preparation in the paddy cultivation is the combination of the tillage practices where that places the soil in the best physical condition for the plant establishment and the crop growth. And the factors to consider in the land preparation are cost and sustainability and soil types characteristics, power resources, method of crop establishment, water availability or supply. The aim of the land preparation is to place the soil in the best physical condition for the crop growth and to ensure that the soil surface is left level. Then the surround field is flooded until the water level is approximately 1 to 2 cm high and allowed to sit for a few days. Finally, the nursery management techniques in the rice are like there are five rice nursery systems first one is wet bed method second is dry bed method third depog method modified depog method parachute method the choice of a particular nursery system depends upon the availability of water labor land and agricultural implements and the wet bed method is followed in the rice in many places the wet bed method follows like it is used in the areas where water is abundant and also conserves the seeds makes the most economical use of the seed in producing the seedlings how to prepare the wet bed there is a question the wet bed preparation be like for the area required for constructing a seed bed we should compute it the rate of the seedling should be 100 grams per square meter of seeds each of each seed bed should be about 1.5 meter wide the selection of the location it is also the important point in the wet bed nursery method and also prepare the land to 30 to 35 days before planting regulate the water level leveling of the soil should be done and measure area of the seed bed how much you are doing and raised seed bed level it should be about 4 to 5 centimeters above the original soil level smooth the surface of the seed bed next sowing the seeds pre-germinated seeds for 24 hours it should be sown broadcast evenly and care of the wet bed method it protects the seedlings from lack of water, protect the seedling from insects and animals, protect the seedling from nitrogen deficiency. Pulling of the seedlings, the time of the pulling of the seedlings will be ready at 20 to 25 days after the sowing. Flood the seed bed a day before pulling. Wash the soil from the roots and bundle the seedlings the bundle the seedlings into a convenient sizes puddling 
puddling and leveling minimizes the water requirement and plow with the tractor drone cage wheel to reduce the percolation losses and to save water requirement up to 20 percent after the establishment stage cyclic submergence of water is the best practice of rice crop 25 days old seedlings 4 to 5 leaf stage uprooted from the nursery bed or transplanted at 3 to 4 cm deep following of 20 into 10 cm spacing with 2 to 3 seedlings per hill in the line planting and 10 into 15 cm in the random planting. The sowing time of rice is grown almost in all crop seasons that is like Karif, Rabi, Summer in the country. Depending upon the prevailing weather, it is sown in different periods in different regions. Coming to the fertilizer application, the recommended fertilizer dose is of like this at 90 is to 60 is to 60 in upland region and 100 is to 60 is to 60 in lowland and hilly region of NPK kg per hectare hybrid rice at the rate of 120 to 150 kg nitrogen plus 60 kg potassium 60 kg phosphorus 25 kg zinc sulfate per hectare Here you can observe the control water management where there are two types traditional and non-flooding rice farming where traditional method includes deep water irrigation and non-flooding rice farming includes dry wet, dry wet method alternation. We should take the resistant varieties of paddy for more yield and for production and some of the resistant varieties for stem borer is Ratna Vikas Saket 4 and Green Leaf Hopper ADT 38 IR 50 IR 24 for Golmich Gauri Lalit MDU 3 for Blast Rasi KRH 2 Bacterial Leaf Blight PR441, PR110, sheath blight. We have the varieties of resistance such as ASD18, ADT39, rice tungro virus resistant varieties of paddy such as ASD15, Ratna Saket4, IR34. Weed management. It is a important practice in the rice the problems of weeds is less in the puddled fields but it is high in the unpuddled fields if we puddle the field before the sowing the weed management is also more and some herbicides such as anilophos butoclor anilophos plus etoxysulfuron uh, pyrosulfuron ethyl Almix plus butachlor or fentrazamide synmethylene plus 2,4-D are used for the weed management. And removal of weeds makes the paddy field to grow more and productive. Coming to the some of the diseases like Chira disease which shows the zinc deficiency in the paddy. It shows the chira disease and some of the leaf blasts. Leaf blasts, the disease here you can observe the leaf blast showing the brown color lesions and collar blast at the collar. Node blast at the node of the paddy. Panicle blast, you can observe where the panicle arises. It has the panicle blast and some of the brown spots. It is also a disease in the rice field. Bacterial blight. It is the major disease in the rice bacterial leaf blight. Where Chira disease 5 kg, it can be managed by 5 kg zinc with the 
2.5 kg lime in 1000 liters of water per hectare for 10 days after transplanting. To avoid the chira disease, if we follow this method, you can control chira disease and zinc deficiency. Coming to the blast, where blast the seed treatment with the thyram at 2.5 grams per kg of seed or tricyclozole 75 wettable sulfur at 1.5 gram per kg of seed is taken to control the blast. Coming to the brown spots, carbon lysium 50 wettable sulfur at 2.0 gram per kg seed or mango soap 75 wettable sulfur at 2.5 gram per kg. It is used for the control of the brown spots. And coming to the bacterial leaf blight. Way to control the bacterial leaf blight, seed treatment with streptocycline 1 gram plus carbon diazium 50 wettable powder 20 grams for 8 to 10 kg of seed in 10 liters of water for 12 to 15 hours. It is the control for the bacterial leaf blight. Coming to the in the paddy field, we come across some of the insects which causes less productivity in the panicles and in the grain filling. We see some of the insects like Gandhi bug, stem borer, brown plant hopper, where Gandhi bug can be controlled by the spray of carbaryl 50, 50 wettable powder at the 1500 grams per hectare during afternoon hours. And also the stem borer or leaf leaf folder can be controlled by the spray of caught up 50 wettable powder at 800 grams per hectare or chlorophyry force can be applied. In the control of the plant, brown plant hopper, we can uh, spray imidacloprid or thiomethoxone at 50 grams per hectare. Coming to the harvesting and threshing. The crop should be harvested when the grains turn yellow, moisture content where moisture content is below 25%. You can observe here in the threshing method here you can observe the threshing method. The threshing, what is meant by threshing? Threshing is the process of separating the grain from the straw. It can be either done by hand or by using thresher or mechanized. Here you can observe they are doing with the, the farmers are doing with the hand. After the process of threshing, we come across winnowing, where winnowing is the process of separating the quality grain from the chaff. It is a crucial process in the cultivation of paddy. If we observe in the cultivation of paddy, winnowing is the must and should and it is a very crucial process. The quality grains which are heavy fall vertically while the weightless chaff on straw get blown away by the wind as seen in the picture. Harvesting. After the harvesting, there will be the yield where the average yield of the rice varieties in the case of upland rice is like 2 to 2.5 tons per hectare and lowland rice be like 4.5 to 5 tons per hectare. Hilly region which includes 3 to 3.5 tons per hectare. With respect to the rice hybrids in irrigated ecology, in 5.5 to 6 tons per hectare, the average yield of the rice varieties should be taken. After the harvesting, the grains should be stored. And storing the grain is done to reduce the grain loss to weather, moisture, rodents, birds, insects and microorganisms. Usually rice should be stored in paddy form rather than the milled rice 
as the husk provides some protection against the insects.